Hi there YouTube, um, welcome to part two of the tuning demo that I did at uh, the 2024 uh, Riviera run uh, this weekend just gone. So this time we're focusing on spark plugs and timing marks. So what we're going to do now is we're, we'll go straight on to have a look at the plugs and see what type of plugs are in there. Okay, first thing I've noticed about plugs is, Rich. Anybody else tell me what's wrong with that plug I just put on the bench? Come and have a look at it. Put it up there. Yeah. What else is wrong with it? As the gentleman's just said, they only went in last night. Oh. Yeah. So what's wrong with them? Well, you lot are hard to get answers out. Yeah. What's wrong with them? Gaps wrong. And that's my point. None of you know anything about gaps. And yet it's in your manual staring you in the face every time you open it. Gap. Yeah? It's a lost, people just don't even, they just get a plug, take it out of the box and it's fine. Yeah? It's not fine. The gentleman's just said he fit these last night out of the box. Right? Didn't get them, just took them straight out. He's no different to anybody else, none of you do it. Or I'll get paid a lot of money to gap plugs, effectively. You know, stop paying me good money to gap, you can gap your own plugs. That's interesting. Okay. Alright. So while that's out, I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do a compression test. Alright? So We've got three black ones and one with no colour on. So let's have a look, see what's going on in that cylinder. If it's got compression, which I'm suspect of, someone said earlier when I slowed it down, it wasn't quite smooth. It was lumpy, yeah. It was a little bit lumpy, so that's what I'm suspicious of. So, how many of you have seen a compression test before? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so when you do a compression test, obviously make sure it's out of gear. Keep your hands free of all the rotating gubbins. Engine needs to be warm, which this one is. Hold the throttle open, crank it. Just turn the key. Yeah. Are you holding the throttle open? Yeah, I've got it. You just turn the key, I'll tell you when to stop. Stop. All right, we've got a lot of compression, so. A lot of compression. Yeah, this is. 217 psi. All right, so. Nothing wrong with that, silly. Says that we built this. Uh, Okay. So the point is, 217 pounds of compression, there's no problem with that cylinder. All right. It's all we're looking for at the moment, so let's just do number three. There you go. All right. It's 215 pounds. 214. Yeah. A bit high, but it's good. 
I'm 90s, much more sensible with modern fuel. Number one says 50. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? That doesn't make any sense. Right, there you go. So, the question is now, we've got good compression and we've got a misfire, so let's have a let's see what else we've got going on. So this should be alright, this part should be alright. Yeah, 2K, no problem with that lead. So, we've got good lead. The only thing we've got suspect so far, it's not enough coil. Yeah. That's the only thing that's causing us any kind of issue. So, what we're gonna do is we'll get these plugs, we'll knock the gap down, back to sensible. Because if we've got a gap the size of, uh, you've got old set of feeders in there, right? And you've got no coil power, What's going to happen? Right, when's it going to misfire? It's going to misfire when it's idling because there's no chalk coil charge time. So, what we're now going to do is reduce that gap to give it a chance to spark. So, that might make it the pull for Jerry. All right. So, this is why it sometimes helps to understand what your ignition system is. So that if you have a problem like this, you can understand, well, why is that missing? Yeah? Well, what we do know so far is we've got good compression. Just get that wrong myself, idiot. Did that yesterday. So what we know is we've got good <laughs> compression. Also what I'm doing is I'm putting that spark plug in a different hole. All right? So it's in number two now, which was previously working. All right? Then put back in. Just to remind people, the one that wasn't firing, I've now put in number two. Okay, 
Okay. Does that sound better? Yeah. Smoother? What do you think that is? We got the fucking plugs, didn't we? Yeah? How important is it to get the plugs? Yeah? I'm, all, I'm you know, I'm pulling your leg, but the point is, gap the plugs, right? These engines won't run without with the wrong gap. Now this one, the gentleman's got an uh, ignition system on it, which halves the power. Then he's put a set of plugs in it, that's the wrong gap. So now, it, now it's misfiring, right? Yeah, it's only misfiring on one, but that's because by the time it gets to that one, there's no energy left. Yeah? And the other thing that's happening I'm running a leaner mixture. So is your fuel. Alright. And it's burning back. Alright. That, and that truly is about optimization. If you've got four cylinders that are not all pulling their weight, right? You're gonna waste fuel. This gentleman came to me in the bar last night and said, I've got four plugs and they're all kind of slightly different and one's, one's completely clean and the others are dirty, right? And I said, well, it could be a lot of things, but all it was was him. That was the issue, right? It wasn't the engine, right? But the point is, you know, I, it, yeah, all right, I'm using him as a joke, but the point, the point I'm trying, trying to demonstrate is the fact that it was his inter, you know, intervention that caused the problem, yeah? He may not have fitted the original ignition system, but, but what he did was not help it by, by not gapping the plugs, alright? You know, so, I, you know, trust me, I've not set this up, this is how they come in, right? So I'm just saying, get your plugs, get the engine running properly. You can't tune an engine unless it's running properly on all four cylinders. So we determine that it's got good compression, that's all good. So why are we ignite it off? Well, We've got gaps, massive, and we've got an old, we've got less power than we're supposed to have. But at least common sense says you ain't gonna fire a big gap. Bring the gap down and it comes. Okay. So, we start shooting. <laughs> so that's it. Let's now have a look at what's going on. How many of you got timing lights? How many of you got cheap timing lights? How many of you hate timing lights that flick and flitter all over the place? Cheap timing lights. Right, next problem. I can't see a timing line. All right, you know. If you want to set an engine up, you need to see the timing marks, right? You've got no hope of getting an engine right and if you can see the timing marks. Never <laughs> so, at the end of the day, there's been many cars this weekend that I can't see the timing marks on. But let's turn it off, we've got to highlight the marks. All you have to do with the timing marks is just verify that you've got the TDC mark on the crankshaft lines with the TDC mark on your engine. Some people are building engines and they don't have any marks on them at all, so there's no pointers or nothing. Right, this is a rookie amateurish mistake. So I've seen them from supposedly professional builders. I don't put timing marks on them, okay? Now this one, I just can't see it. There's a timing mark there, but I just can't see it highlighted, right, because it's been nicely painted, but that's fine. But if you're going to make an engine, then you highlight them in silver or white paint so you can see what's going on. All I use here is tip it. But what I have to do is turn the engine around so I can see it. We've got a nice timing mark, okay? Oh, as the factory should, it's just can't, you can't see it under normal light. So what I'm going to do is you never, ever, ever assume that the timing mark on an engine is actually right. Okay? So the first thing you want to do when you get to a timing mark is 
verify its position. So how do you verify its position? See, you're all getting in now. You're, you're interactive. I like it. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. You basically confirm. Now, you, if you want to, you can do a dial gauge. You put a dial gauge in there and just get the piston perfectly at TDC and then see where it lines up. That's all good. But because I've done this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, I just verify that I'm somewhere near right. And I can see it. And we're within, we're within a degree, so that's absolutely good. Hopefully you enjoyed that there. Uh, stay tuned to this channel and part three will be coming very soon. As ever, please like and subscribe and share. Thank you very much.